beautiful people. More life, more blessings. Right back at you. The Do It For The Love podcast. You know we all about celebrating life, celebrating love. We outside even though we inside. And tonight we celebrate laughter. For the love of laughter. But before we get into all of that, for all of our listeners, audio listeners, I'm Eric Buddy Davis. You know my comrade is in the building, Mr. Soul Spitfire. You feeling my G? I'm feeling good, man. So you know me, man. Feeling good, feeling great. Feeling great, feeling good. And we hope you are too. So for all of those first listeners that's checking us out, we start off our show with checking the temperature. You know, it's a little cold outside depending on where you're at in the world. Us East Coast people, we hitting winter. So, so, what's your tip like, my G? My tip is good, man. It's been a good week for me, making a lot of progress on all work. I just started a new mural, you okay. know, at the uh, Boys and Girls Club at the Severn Center. So, I got a short window to work on that, um, but they've been real patient with me, so I'm excited about that. Um, got a date, big date with my daughter this week. Okay, what y'all doing? I don't know yet. Okay. Something fun. Um, she was excited when I texted her about it. So okay. I get to chill with my daughter this weekend and uh, just lay back and kick it. I love it. How about you? What's your temperature today? My temperature today is pretty amazing, bro. Uh, at work today, we had an event um, at the UM, UMSOD School of Dentistry. We had our work retreat in December, two days in Turf Valley. And today we had a speaker by the name of Charles Clark. I think he's from Baltimore. Um, he used to be a track runner. He uh, was representing our country. Um, and then he transitioned his life and is a motivational speaker. And today he said a statement. I felt like I heard me talking, bro. He was so good, so positive. But he said, procrastination is the assassination of your biggest destination. Man, that shit had my mind rolled. To the point where I started to speak it out loud. And right now I am maybe scheduled to be the keynote speaker at the dental school retreat next year. Congratulations. Thank you, bro. I didn't get a check, but I was talking to the team today and they said, Eric, we absolutely can see you up there. So for all those people that absolutely believe in Eric, big things coming real, real soon. But my temperature's feeling good, my G. It's been a great week. You know, it's holiday season, so life is good. Sure. So tonight, as you already said, tonight's conversation is about the love of laughter. Mm -hmm. So when I think about where we are today, 2023, post-COVID, I think we are in the most sensitive time of maybe our existence. I think anxiety's at all-time high. I think depression's at all-time high. I think people are just frantic. And I say all that to say, we need to get back to relaxing. We need to get back to loving. And most of all, we need to get back to laughing. So let's just speak on what laughter does for the soul, what humor does for the soul, and how this new culture is even trying to limit comedy. For me, I mean, I've always loved comedy. One of my favorite comedians of all time is Eddie Murphy. Um, cool. So I remember the first movie that I seen, of course, Boomerang was one of the classic. Like, one, of my, one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies is, uh, you know what, he's Axel Foley. You know what I mean? Beverly Hills Cop is an underrated Beverly Hills Cop 2 is my movie. favorite movie, bro, from Eddie Murphy. And, uh, you know, I said that to say because you spoke about COVID. So being stuck in the house for so long, you know, we was forced to Netflix and chill, watching TV or not go anywhere. For me, once we got out of the pandemic, I started to see some of my first comedy shows. Okay. Um, and I've seen quite a few people that I've always wanted to see, Damon Wayans, okay. Bill Bellamy. Um, and I wanted to speak on the joint with Dave Chappelle. Can we go for that? So I just clearly remember that at the Dave Chappelle show at Maryland Live, it was the episode, I mean, the, the special right after he had just got attacked on stage. Mm -hmm. So he came out with a lot different energy um, than he usually did. So I kind of felt like I was shorted in my Dave Chappelle experience. Like gotcha. He came out, most of his set, if it was an hour, I want to say 40 minutes of his set, was focused around talking about that situation. Gotcha. And I know that that wasn't originally his set that he did prior to being right. attacked. So, I said all that to say, you know, we had a, a space in life where comedy is being targeted by groups of people who just want to find something small to pick fun at when that's what comedy was. Comedy is, is and to this day, something that make you feel good, make you feel better, can turn your whole day around by having the right person come around to tell you a joke. Absolutely. So that's my standpoint on it. Comedy needs to stay alive. No, absolutely. At the end of the day, I can talk about my favorite comedians, I can talk about my favorite comedy movies, but I just want to focus on relax your mind, relax your soul. Life is short. All that in between shit that you make more stressful than it has to be, just relax. Look in the mirror, laugh at yourself. What makes your heart jump? What makes you feel less serious? And life is serious, don't get me wrong. Everything day to day you can be taken out of here is way more ways to die than it is to live. But 
at the same time, we got a window of opportunity to celebrate ourselves, to celebrate the people we love and live a very, I would say, high value life or quality of life. And I think that laughter for me has always been something that just comes natural. I come, I come from a family full of fucking jokesters. I come from a family of, if you can't take it, then leave the room. And at the same time, I think what the world needs to hear is that sometimes nobody fucking cares. And it's okay to be the only one that cares sometimes. Because if you know your path and you look in the mirror every day and you leave the house knowing what your goal is, then you shouldn't take everything that everybody throws at you when you walk out the house as serious. Sometimes laugh at the things that even make you mad and then realize how you can grow from it. But don't let them see you sweat. Laugh a little bit, sweetheart. Relax. And that's really it, man. The love of laugh is important for the soul. And uh, back in the day, not trying to go super deep, but I've seen stories where slaves would find situations to laugh about in distress. Imagine that. Shackle whip all fucking day and you still laughing? If them niggas can laugh, you can too. And I'm gonna just leave it at that. I say us as black people, we always find a way to laugh at shit even when it is serious. And that's, uh, again, the importance of comedy. And it'd be funny when I see people in the comments mad that is niggas in their clown in a serious situation. But I mean, what else can we do? Are we supposed to sit there and dwell in it and let that ruin our day if it ain't got shit to do with us? Like, and we the kings of flipping shit too. Yeah. Our culture, we flip shit quick. Same thing as I made the, the, the talk about slavery. We flip things, we make things great, we make things better, even when it might be directed to make us look worse. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say, man, laugh a little, love a lot, laugh a lot, love a little. Either way, find your fucking balance, do both. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, we have our first sponsor highlight for the night. And tonight, I want to highlight a restaurant in Annapolis, Maryland, by the name of Osteria 177. Uh, this is a spot that I went to eat at several times, but I went there over Thanksgiving, and the food was amazing. It's a one-of-one -one Italian spot located downtown Annapolis, Maryland, where we're from. Uh, for those who don't know, and especially our audio listeners, we plan to, at a certain time, go into restaurants, do our highlight specials in the restaurant with the chefs, with the owners, just to show people more variations of doing it for the love, because we love you, and so do you, I'm sure. So I just wanted to highlight them. I wrote down the boss's name that I wanted to shout out personally, and his name is... Shout out to Caesar and shout out to Bernard from Osteria 177. I'm coming back and I hope more people watch this episode. Come and give y'all support as well. Try the rigatoni con salsis. <laughs> if you know a little bit of time in your life. So moving forward, let's get into I Love Till I Love. I'll let you kick it off. And for those audio listeners, Love Till I Love is where we take our opportunity to highlight something that we may not prefer. For instance, I'm a Washington Commander fan. I love to not love the Dallas Cowboys. That's the example. So My first love to not love is Charleston White. Because I actually do love him sometimes because, you know, he really do be talking some shit. True. But he, he tends to get off his rocker a few times and follow up some good shit that makes sense with some shit that just debunked that and discredit everything good that he said. But Facts. I would encourage people to watch him regardless. So that new interview with Cam Newton, fire. No, Charleston White is definitely as he will call himself an oxymoron. Something that you but you gotta love. Blink that out, no. So, moving forward, my first love to not love is a jokester who cannot take a joke. Do not throw the stone if your feelings is made of glass, my people. At the end of the day, this is for the love of laughter. Humor is supposed to invoke feeling. But if you can't take a joke, I suggest that you don't make one. My next one, Christian Rock and Blueface, bro. Again? Get back to the music again, bro. I'm tired of it. I ain't gonna say nothing else. That's all the time. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Jay, Alexis, and Christian Live the other night. I found it very entertaining. Um, my second one. Ladies, do not shoot me. I'm sorry. Makeup. I love the unmixed version of it. I love the B cuts. I love the album cuts. You look great regardless, I'm sure. But I know what you got to do, what you got to do. And I understand all the ladies that apply it, especially those that apply it well. Really, I'm talking to like the wedding makeup. That should be a lot. It'd be way too much for the girls. I don't know how many weddings you've been to or you've seen it. I have one of my dates, he's an ex-girlfriend of mine now. I don't want to name her. But man, her makeup was trash at a wedding that we went to. She hated it, she told me herself. So I won't say no names, I hope y'all don't put it together. Shout out to the bro. How do you politely tell somebody their makeup ain't shit? That shit ain't right. <laughs> if you love them. You know, it's always for the love. But 
you gotta be real. If the person in the corner ain't gonna be real with y'all don't know who will be. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to those who need it, shout out to those who don't, do what you must. Um, my third one for today, I actually wrote Charleston White as well. Because like one of my favorite movies, the vampire book to say, good is evil. <laughs> evil is good. And I think Charleston White is one of them type of people that he knows how to play on people's emotions. And it's easy to not love him, but at the same time, if you're missing the gems that he's saying, it's almost like what I would say about Donald Trump. Another person loves you, not love. Just because you don't like the message, it doesn't mean the message doesn't have validation to it. And as you say that, I kind of think, like, maybe he throwing that same shit that I was talking about for the sound bites. True. He might, like, because him and Cam Newton, going back to that podcast interview, they was going back and forth. And I remember at one point in the interview, Charleston was like, well, it's all entertaining. Like, right. you know, and I really thought they was ready to scrap it out. But I guess, like you say, he masked up his emotions. And just be lying, because then they said, listen to my words, not my actions. But no, look at my actions, not my words. I'm like, bro, you literally said everybody you hate is based off their words. You ain't never see these niggas kill nobody. He also the same person that said he would smack his bitch, but he never smacked her. <laughs> That's the shit I'm telling you. Oh, man. So moving on from my love to not love segment, we have our shining light series. And so who's we shining the light on tonight? Who are we? Shine I'm going to shine the light on Italian or Baltimore Studios. That is where we shoot our show. It is where it gave us a home for our podcast lane. Um, I feel like we were searching, for those who don't know, we were trying to plan this podcast since February 2023, and we couldn't find a home. We were thinking about doing everything ourselves, buying all the cameras ourselves, shooting it ourselves, which wouldn't have been the most cost efficient thing at the time, but we wanted to control and own what we did. But we found this gentleman who runs an amazing studio, Baltimore, Maryland. I ain't gonna say the address tonight because I know the opera's be watching too. So, Italian Baltimore, follow our Instagram page you can see where we shoot, follow him, check him out. Amazing product, amazing work they do here, way more than just a podcast space. So please, Fast check them out. with all of that. Price Absolutely. Me. This is one building I walked into and seen more stilettos than I seen in my life. <laughs> so, Tell me at Baltimore. We can see fashion, you can see podcasts, tattoo studio upstairs. I mean Your fashion, your lifestyle is not detail off. <laughs> Absolutely. So moving on, we have our first guest. We ready to bring on our first guest for the love and laughter. We ready? Let's go. Beautiful right. people, we right back at you. We have our guest for the evening. My brother, my man, Mr. Fred Watkins, a.k.a. Hey, Craig. What's up, my brother? I like the government first. What's up, big guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see y'all, man. Good no, to see y'all. I appreciate you being here. My pleasure. My pleasure. Sure. Again, my guy Fred is a comedian, show producer from Baltimore, most notably known as a member of the Empire on Oxygen's TV hit show, hey. Last Squad Standing. Okay, that's cool. Straight that's from the cool. website. Let's get it. Sure. <laughs> gotta have some fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man. Gotta be good, man. I gotta edit that. I gotta update that. Yeah, we're right. doing some things, man. Well, yeah, we I got mean, some more notables. We don't get into that. Yeah, so yeah, let's get it. What we like to do with our guests is we pretty much have like who, what, when, where, and why of your mm -hmm. journey, of your legacy. Yeah. So I'm gonna start off keeping it real simple. Who's Big Fred? Who's Fred Watts? Oh uh, man, Big Fred is a East Baltimore native, uh, someone that's gonna go down in history for being themselves and maximizing that potential globally, man. Uh, being able to do a lot for himself, his family, his community, and the entire world. You know what I mean? With a big focus on uh, black people, mm -hmm. black youth, and just a uh, uh, community and, 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 and global empowerment. You know what I mean? Global uh, empowerment. Yeah, I like that. By the way of laughter, by the way of love, communication, uh, just building and just being authentic, man, genuine, mm -hmm. definitely. Who told my who is, uh, who told Big Fred he was funny? Damn, who told Big Fred he was funny? Probably like my second grade teacher, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like my second grade teacher. Shout out to Miss Kelly, man. I don't even remember people's names that I met last week. So for me to still remember Miss Kelly's name, she was dope, man. I used to just talk a lot. You know, I ain't never shut the hell up. And she actually made me consider being quiet because she told me that I was funny. So I was like, damn, like, you know, because when we be talking, we just want attention. We want some type of, right. uh, just some type of, 
reception, you know what I mean? And, and for her to give me something back, like, you know, ha ha ha, you, you funny little nigga. Like, I, it, it kind of made me say, you know, I'm gonna be good for Miss Kelly. I ain't gonna talk all that day. She gave me the attention that I was seeking, you know what I mean? So, all you teachers out there, yeah. especially today, you see what Miss Kelly did? She didn't Come make on. his talking stand out in the bag, but she let him know he was great, which made him be like, oh, nigga, listen to this motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, boys in the hood when the teacher told you, oh, you like talking? Come teach the class. Absolutely. And you went up there and did his thing. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, we work with educators all over, man. Shop a little lab, so that's that's fun. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's fine, bro. So, Stella, why don't you take the what? Um, what made you create little labs? Like, you know, you somebody who's super busy in your own craft, in your own profession right now. Yeah. What is it that made you advocate for the youth and made you create little labs? And tell us about little labs. Yeah, so I always say good people in community uh, changed my life, you know what I mean? Because I learned so much that nonprofit is an industry, yo, and sometimes that, sh that shit is more corporate and, and, and thugged out than what they like to say the street is, you know what I mean? Like, people really make a lot of money and exploit uh, our disparities and, and, and the pain that, you know, a lot of us go through and our youth go through. So I say good people in community. So uh, some good people in community, man, really helped change my life. And I know not only would I not be here, like, alive, I also wouldn't be here having the belief or the expanded mind to, that I could do what I'm doing if it wasn't for good people in the community. So I was always inspired, man. Since I got inspired, that once I decided to do anything worth doing, I would uh, take that background away. You know what I mean? So I never really left the hood at all or never really left having that passion for youth. But once I started comedy and it started to work, I went to Calabasas and we did that show the, uh, out on Oxygen last fall standing. We actually won that shit, which was dope. Congrats. Um, and I came back, thank you, bro. I came back home and everybody was like, yo, you need to move back. You need to move to Cali. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like that was when I was called the most to start this this organization, you know, um, to get into these schools in front of these youth because I felt and still feel that my uh, uh, future, my prosperity is promised. So I just thought that if I start to plant them seeds early, then they can see someone grow, you know, like, damn, yo, he was with me, he dedicated time. A lot of kids, because of what they don't get, if they see someone in schools, they either think, yo, don't have no motion, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. Or they think, like, yo, well, if you do have motion, how, why the hell are you here? Because nobody of any type of fame or success or anything comes here, you know what I mean? So I just wanted to be somebody that sparked that, that you could do both, you know what I mean? And had these kids really inspired, like, yo, I knew, I knew him, well, I know him, I know him, and he's really doing this, like, Bro, I started volunteering for like civic works while we was on TV, bro. And the dopest shit in the world was to be on TV every Tuesday night with a dope show with some good announcement ratings, man. I'm talking about mm -hmm. millions of people watching this shit. Mm -hmm. And they had people like, yo, I seen you on TV. Like, I'm talking about down the hill, walking through alleys, doing different shit, like just community right. service, man. And having people, young people and older people being like, yo, you're not the nigga that, how? And so it just helps people understand that TV really, all that extra shit don't really mean nothing. It's really about real shit, you know what I mean? So that's really one of the things, that one of the pillars I, I, I put my life on, you know what I mean? You might have just answered it. That was a great response. Um, but I'll see if there's anything left in that. What about that experience or what about home pretty much connects? Like, what about that experience made you want to come back and go harder? I feel like you just said that, but if you could pinpoint anything specific, just for our listeners and our audience, because I want people to know that we said something earlier about people feel like they got to go away right. to do things sometimes. And you went away, had success, but you wanted to bring it back here. Yo, so Skola went in line, yo. Like, <laughs> shout out to Skola. When he went, when he went viral on uh, TMZ, and Skola when he went is, to LA, Skola, 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 Skola's in there. Skola's, I mean, I said Skola, not Skola. Skola is a rapper, um, a, a famous global rapper from Baltimore, Maryland, man. Dope, got a whole bunch of hits, a whole bunch of songs, man. But he rap Baltimore Hub. Uh, his first time in um, in LA, he had went viral on like TMZ because he was talking about the palm trees and how they were so high and shit. <laughs> and, and, and people, especially out west, they were laughing at that because they didn't understand why he was so hype, why he was so passionate about they that. This is like because they not they haven't been over here, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So like it's really a thing to have your mind expanded to the rest of the world, especially coming from a place like Baltimore, especially coming from the trenches, man. So like the, I, I always give credit to two of my mentors. I actually just connected back with. They took me to DC to like. Uh, uh, um, a record company like a label one of his brothers had a label when I was younger mm -hmm. then between DC getting gentrified and all them clubs they had some stock in the club so he took me to the club and I, I was so hyped from that bro like because in my mind 
I was never gonna be in anything. Like when I saw the plaques and shit from the artists they was right. working with, like that shit really expanded my mind. Yo, so I went back around the way and lied to everybody. <laughs> I told them niggas this for real sign me the nut to me. I, I was just saying shit because I wanted and I wasn't being malicious with it. I just wanted to keep that feeling that I could actually be something. You know what I mean? So so I fell in love with that feeling so much and it meant so much to me that when I did get an experience to be mic'd up every Time you wake up and, and, and as soon as you get out the shower, you mic'd up and they hear you and they recording you everywhere. Like that type of experience expanded my mind. I wanted to take some of the vibes back around the way before I continue to go on that route. You know what I mean? So we got so many seeds planted now with you that are now older, you know, older teenagers, still some young kids. I mean, we're, that'd be great, but it's just dope because as I continue to do what God calls me to do, man, these kids are gonna have their mind expanding because they like, yo, this nigga was just right here. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, yo hosting the grind, like, like whatever it is, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that, 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 and that, yo, that expanded mind is so, is so important, man, because everything around us is conditioned for us not to have a mind that we can see ourselves places. So when you're able to do that, man, that shit really has a, a, a effect. Man, I appreciate it. Thank you. No I wanted to touch base on a couple words that you said. Um, being from Baltimore and having all of these things around you, what boundaries do you set for yourself? Knowing that you travel and you got the potential to leave, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of tragic situations, crime, people dying, um, especially people of your caliber who've been famous. Absolutely. What boundaries do you set for yourself or what steps do you try to walk in to keep yourself away from those type of situations? Yo, man, you, you'll grow into it if you don't believe it now, but like selfish is not a bad word, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and you'll know in your spirit when you're being malicious or not, you know, um, when it's coming from a negative place. But when you're just putting yourself first, like, that's okay. You know what I mean? And a lot of us, man, we come from so many, you know, eight bedroom homes, niggas. I mean, not eight bedrooms, but eight niggas in the bed. <laughs> like, not eight bedrooms. I'm sorry, you grew up. Not, no, not, 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 not down the head. Like, no, 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 no. Not chest and chest. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, and I didn't even have eight in mind, but, you know, sometimes we might went over cuz I was all that. Yeah, no, but I'm just basically saying, like, so many situations where you're used to surviving together that once you start doing things as an individual you feel that 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 survival's remorse is like yo i still got to do for everybody like man i'm still getting past so many times where i get a big payday or you know something nice you know over the years especially especially as a young nigga just feeling like all right bet like we made it and like nah nigga like you actually did it's actually people that are born in wealth and, and, and with knowledge and information. So when you get your little bag, that's, you still in the negative. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of us come from where we come from, don't look at it like that. We like, oh, we got a bag. Oh, it's time to take care of moms and take care of yours. And the whole time, bro, you came from the negative. So now you might got a bag. That's your next step in the negative to get to zero. Not even the positive yet, nigga, to get to zero. So that's, that's something that I am still learning. You know what I mean? So just understand and be okay with that you're building and when you got a good heart and you do for people regardless, then you gotta just trust that, no matter what people say. So I think that's one. Another one is just presence, man. It's good to be in rooms, but it's also good to just watch the rooms you win. You know what I mean? Um, watch the rooms you win, yo. People, you know, they don't give a fuck. Like, people wanna try to get you wherever it makes sense for them, but you gotta know what makes sense for you. And uh, also just time, man. Time is, and where you give your time, what you spend time doing, that's a real boundary as well. Like, I still go places, I go plenty of places, but, the Fred now doesn't stay as long as maybe the Fred in the mm -hmm. past. Like, I pull up at places, niggas be like, damn, you was there, sure. Like, sometimes I go early, because if you really want to go to check in and support, you get what I'm saying? Because that's really what it becomes now. You we done did so many parties. Where a lot of times it's networking, supporting, you want to show some love and shit like that. Um, you can have a good time doing whatever. So now it's more so just checking in. You might get a couple, you know, Vibes going to see a couple people and then you, you know you did. I ain't really staying telling any shit no more. I'm too old to be playing the let out. You get what I'm saying? Just just know what type of time you want, man. One thing I, I dope that I seen you do on social media um, that tailors to what you just said was I think you ran a marathon. I don't know if that's something you say all the time. <laughs> Either way, it's a half. Y'all ain't home. I don't want, I want nobody. Like, man, I didn't think I'm right. Because them runners be passionate, man. Right? right. Really so. But them halves is crazy, though. No lie. Like, I ain't smoking a whole zip. It's cool. Oh, them halves is crazy. That's the cool. <laughs> oh, look. See, I wasn't even, it wasn't even for me. It wasn't about how long you ran. Right. It was just the fact that you did it. And I'm just saying bro. that. That's a lot. It, I think that people in your stature, especially when they see you starting to really get out there with your profession and do that. That you may encourage people to try to like, damn, if Fred did it, I could do it. You know? Yeah, so yeah. I love seeing people go out, and I don't know if that's your norm or not, but you know, I would assume that it's not because 
you know, it's Baltimore, who, yeah. not, you know, no, besides the running man, you know, yeah, that's the only yeah. time. Shout out to the running man. Yeah. <laughs> right, running right now. Like, shout out <laughs> to the running man. Y'all went through so much depression, man, and um, just, like, even depression started me in comedy, man, but, like, you know, just being in our city and just being being a black man, just, just you know, striving for something great. We would go through things. So around the time I started running, man, I, um, it was COVID, and I, you know, I mean, I didn't want to take the bag saying, I was like, yo, this is when the, the science wasn't being done. Right. Everybody was talking. I said, yo, well, I'm going to just keep myself as healthy as possible. I'm going to keep my respiratory healthy. I'm going to start running. Right. So I started running and um, and I just kept going. And then between that, man, I just lost a couple, you know, close brothers of mine, man, back to back to back. So, and yeah. uh, one of my, my, my closest um, family members was locked up. I'm still dealing with cousin that's been locked up for 20 years for murder he ain't commit he was framed and it's his project working with we're gonna get him out this year shop the rep but um it running became my outlet though so a lot of people see me changing physically and was like that's what's up man you, you, you're doing so much good things for your body and i'm like yo y'all don't understand this shit is for my that's mind for my <laughs> i'm trying to keep myself alive mentally so um i got into the into the marathon man i, I grabbed a, a team um you know it's always good to have a village man so shout out to cool and cool and started neighborhood heroes and uh, we started running every Tuesday, bro. So my first marathon was the bottom. My first half was the bottom of the marathon. We did that. Um, and then I did the LA marathon uh, this year. Also did the half. Then I featured for Adele Givers in Pittsburgh in October. The oh, show man. was over at 12.30. And I caught a plane back to Baltimore to do the Baltimore half this year. And I don't know who the hell I thought I was, bro. By the time the seventh month hit, and I was at I mean, the seventh mile, I was at uh, Montebello Lake Shorty. I was like, yo, who the like, cause I thought I was so slick getting off the plane and right. By the time I got to the lake, bro, I was like, who the hell you thought you was, dog? Yeah, like, to the but nigga, nigga. <laughs> but, it, but we finished it, man. I'm talking about I had to get every Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta, like any type Super of saying, Yo, I'm like, man, but but we finished it, bro. So it was a lot of pride with that, man. No, that's major, bro. I know for a fact that anytime you sign up to do something like that, that you may, it may not be your normal your everyday. To accomplish and adore that all is a major feat, my J. Exactly. So I just, man, shout out to that. I've never run a marathon, but I definitely want to do that one day. So yeah, you're going to do it, bro. You're going to show up. So left to me is my why. So I feel like you've honestly explained a lot of why you do it. You spoke about the kids. You spoke about hometown. You spoke about the homies. But if you could get just a little bit more, I guess, give a little more insight to the why. And when I say why, you can speak specifically about the last, you can speak specifically about the comedy, or you can just speak about the neighborhood. But what is your why for your actions in the work? Oh man, I think my why is just um, knowing that we only get one life, you know what I mean, so far. And just knowing that we had the opportunity to maximize that. I am always felt like I can maximize it, should maximize it, being my authentic self, man. So a lot of times that's comedy, a lot of times that's love, a lot of times that's just engaging in how I engage, man. You got people that say you're afraid dope when it come to business. You got other people that say you're afraid funny as hell. I love that nigga. You got people that say you're afraid help me change my life. You know what I mean? Um, but whatever it is, it's always been authentically me. So I wanted to just make a staple that not only can you do that and have impact, right, in your life and people's lives, you can also do that and make money. You can do that and change your life in that way too. So I think that's really my why. Um, just knowing that I'm blessed to breathe every day and wanting to maximize that by creating like a genuine legacy and being that exact person that's allowed to breathe every day. Right, what's up, my brother? Uh, I don't have a why, but I do have a when. Um, when do you find out or find that your funny is most important? Is it at funeral? Like, do you when you go to a funeral, are you the <laughs> funny person that get people? You know, get them out there, that dark place. Oh, hey, yo. Yo. this nigga like funeral. Yeah, this nigga like asking questions about funerals. Yeah, I don't get it. It was like the funeral was premeditated. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hey, yeah, no, it's funny you said that, man. I lost a lot of people, man. A lot of them said, bro. One of my, my brother, my blood brother, man, he died um, in 2012. Around the time I started comedy, man, I started comedy at 13, and his funeral was so dry, man. I got up there and just got, just, just was geeking, yeah, bro. Was, like, man. was geeking. That's one of the reasons I knew I could do this shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was that hurt moment. Yo, bro, people was like, yo, up. bro, that was the funniest funeral. So that's why I started laughing. <laughs> but I think, um, yo, comedy is, is used in a way to open people up, man. And, um, and I think uh, that's a good ass question, bro. So I, I'll try to answer it like this. We do these professional developments, like we train educators through left to right. And I think that's really dope because most of the time teachers hate P PDs, professional developments, they hate them. They turn into students. Like all the shit they tell students not to do, when they go to PDs, they do it. They on their phone, they talk to each right. other, they have sleep, they're trying to leave, they're not trying to come up, trying to lie about it. All this, 
stuff. Yo, all y'all, I know y'all, y'all gonna watch some of y'all teachers out here. Y'all do, but what we do, man, we bring more so effective education, but within comedy. So it's like a comedy show. So it's entertaining. The teachers love it. It raises morale. They be in there laughing. But it's also effective. We teach them how to relate to the kids, but how to create safe spaces, how to work with each other. We talk about workplace bullying and all that. So I, I, I may not have answered where my comedy is the most effective, but that's one of my favorite spaces and most unique spaces to use it because we're able to find new places to to put comedy in and it's effective. Yo, know, like people will book me at first, like T principals, like yo, I want my, my teachers to laugh. Can I book you? But then they start seeing how effective the actual information was. Right. They like yo, now it's like yo, my teachers having trouble communicating. Can you can you come in too? You get what I'm saying? So just being that that guy that's more than a comedian, but still brings laughter as a tool. That shit is dope, bro. And we the only people, from what I know, mm -hmm. we the only people to do it how we do it in the world, man. Straight from bottom. So. And just to to see where your credit. Of how much you love your passion. Do you find yourself choosing these nonprofit situations with the kids over your paid gigs or do you always choose your paid gigs over your nonprofit? Now a lot of man, I put so much time, effort and money into Low Labs bro because I believe in it. And the business model within it is actually potentially and and has started to show that it can be pretty pretty lucrative, man. Um uh, one thing that we don't understand is black people is, is a lot of this I think financial structure and corporate structure and stuff like that. So nonprofits are some of the most lucrative uh, um, industry, you know, uh, platforms in the world. You know That's what I mean? And, and absolutely. And um, and it's about you know having that heart to do it as well. So we're here doing it, but we're doing it organically from the heart. So it's just about us building on what's really innovative and making it make sense business wise. You know what I mean? I have a company called Big Labs. So when we do our PDs and a lot of our IP, intellectual property, we assign it to, to big labs, you know what I mean? So we have a way that we can serve, but also start to create some 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 paper trail and some revenue for um, for the for-profit company. That was a mind bar right there. Sure. Shut so that up, remind it if you need to. Miss Kelly, you see what you did, girl? <laughs> you still living out there, you created a goddamn monster. Hey, yo. Uh, I love it, though. He out here teaching us. She out here making a lot. 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 That's the first time I heard of that. Oh, for real? Miss Kelly living in that? She sure did. She might be living in that. She's living in that. I don't know the people teaching us. She's living in that. But uh, that's all I have for the Win What Wear and Why Something. You good? So at this point, we're going to move into Rapid Five. For all of our audio listeners, our visual listeners, y'all know what's up. Our visual viewers, all our audio listeners, rapid fire. We ask quick questions. We try to evoke quick emotion, quick answers. Some serious, some funny. This is the last episode. So, so I'm gonna start. Let's keep it calm. Rush hours or Fridays? Dang, Fridays. Okay, but whoo, for sure, that's a good start. Rush hours, rush hours, no key hilarious. Hell yeah, shout out to Chris Tuck, shout out to Jack Chan. Yes sir. He only know Fifty Cent. Yes sir. He said. Name one thing you gotta do before getting off stage. Before getting off stage. On stage. Oh, before getting on stage. That Nah, before getting on stage. Um, shoot, I gotta do this. <laughs> I don't know if I get on stage, I always do like a little mini jug shit that nobody sees most of the time because I'm backstage. Yeah. So that's what I got to do. I used to watch wrestling when I was a little nigga. So <laughs> like, like, I'm used to the rock and all the things before they come out. So before I get on stage, they introduce me. I know you're going to introduce me. When I'm backstage, I usually do some type of little pivot, little bounce and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, that's, that's me. If Big Fred ever laid on stage, he was backstage with a half marathon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, so my next question is going to be, let's go ahead with it. You get a road trip. Okay. On this road trip, you get to pick up your favorite comedian. Who you picking up? Favorite comedian on a road trip. Man, that's not going to be on my thing. Bro, I'm the biggest introvert, extrovert. Let me see. I think I get, I get Dave Chappelle, right? Okay. And I thought about a few, but I get Dave because Dave gonna be funny as shit. He not gonna talk too damn much. Like it's some comedians, bro. Just gonna <laughs> give you they whole set, like the whole the whole trip. They gonna give you one hour, then the next hour. Right. But it seemed like Dave would be watching, watching, watching. Oh, you ever seen that? Uh, <laughs> they go back and watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. I can't stand this mother, and I, I think that'd just be more the better cadence for me. So I'm gonna get Dave. Gotcha. He gonna yeah. teach me some shit. He gonna make me think about some random. He might not talk to you a lot, but you definitely gonna be smelling like a pack of cigarettes when you get out of the car. Yeah, yeah that's the right part that I'm gonna make, make me change my mind. Drag. <laughs> so so we, we step outside. We get in the time machine. You drop. What year are we going to? Mm -hmm. And what comedy show? I mean, what year is it? And what comedy? Who comedy show are we going to? 
No lie, no lie. We going to year 2012. Not as far as y'all probably thought. And we going to Kevin Hart's. Um, I don't know where you at. Is it Grown Little Man? It's one of the, uh, or the one. What's the one at the Grown Little Man? Uh, seriously Funny. Yes. We going to Kevin Hart's Seriously Funny 2012. It's going to be fucking hilarious. And I'm going to uh, invest in so much Bitcoin. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> I like that. Okay. So my next question is going to be. Dinner with your girl, if you had one, mm -hmm. but her mother. Dinner with your girl's mother, or brunch day party with your girl phone. <laughs> Which one you going to? We going brunch day party. Yo. We going to have a good time. I'ma just we gonna put it all out there. Y'all right. taking pops? You know what I mean? Is pop single? <laughs> I think all pops are single. Even if pops is coming, coming. <laughs> pops is coming. I'm putting pops on. I'ma make pops day. He gonna love me. He gonna be like, I like that yeah. nigga. I'm telling you, pops. Right. Cool, Mom's man. probably already love me. So I think it's a great thing. Pops for love. You learn a game from Fred. That's the best thing to do when you get in the show. You got to meet pops and make sure pops comfortable. With you. Make so, sure pops comfy, man. Oh, uh, my next question. Worst joke you ever said. <laughs> Word. <laughs> you niggas remember that worst joke, yo? Oh shit, worst joke I ever said. Give me some offense. Oh my gosh, yo! I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it ain't gonna be the worst, but it could be something that you just read the wrong. Like, damn, wow. Um, damn, that's right. The fire came out. Damn, yo. We gotta spend, uh, we gotta spend the block section before we we'll come back later. and We can elaborate on something. So if you can't think now, we can't. Uh, spend the block yo, all right, I'm gonna think about it. Worst yeah. joke I ever said. Damn, I'm gonna think about it. All right, all right so this one. I actually got two more, and since I'm gonna ask this one first, one stage you want to touch as a comedian, and it could be a garden, it could be anywhere, stadiums, outdoor, indoor, one place that like, because I know for me, you said it earlier, and it's crazy that you said it, I'm in the Vels, I would love to do the Grammys one day, I love music, I would love to do the Oscars one day, I love yeah. movies, if I could ever touch them stages, to me, I made it, yeah. even though I'm doing great work now, but to me, that's the pit, like, that's the, that's the amount of time. What would be the stage for you? Shout out to Big Kev, man. I'm Big Fred. I'm from Baltimore. Yo, if I could pack out, when I pack out the Ravens Stadium, that shit would be so amazing to me. Whether it's m t whether it's something else at that time, 68,000 people, everybody came to see me in my hometown, bro. That would be amazing. Cause I was thinking Grammys, all that stuff. But yo, if I can bring people to the stadium, and if it's the bank, if I could pack out the Bank? That's major. Oh, bro. So the stage too, but I don't want to do the stage unless we sell that bitch out. So I guess I, I, no, I, I, I got answer you. your question. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I, got you. I think it's a great answer. I'm thinking somewhere close. I'm like, it would be dope to see Fred name and the lights local. So I thought about La Casino. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. Sure. Oh, no, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, no, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Kev did uh, Lincoln, you know what I mean? Yeah, he did, he did like a lot of financial field, and it came out for him, bro, for him to be from Philly yeah. and do the Eagles <laughs> Stadium. Like, come on, bro. Like, so I just want to check it off for my city. I love it. And then, you know, I'm booking Baltimore Comics. It's going to be yeah, like, yeah, crazy. Yeah. It's going to be stupid. I got you. So, um, I got one more. I'll one of the Baltimore one. Alright, bet. So, um, hmm. Alright, so. <laughs> so, like, alright, so listen thing. Alright, Baltimore women. And this is why. Cause, dang. Hmm. Baltimore women. <laughs> Baltimore women got a little bit more, you know what I mean? Like, they beautiful, they neat, and they got a little bit more, uh, uh, detail a little bit more texture in their story you get what I'm saying and that's important too when I go to LA honestly um you know I've had women you know say nice things to me I've said nice things to women but in LA honestly it's so many women everywhere you know what I mean so when I go to LA I'm not like most people bro I'm so focused because it's so many freaking women you know what I mean it's not like it's a, it's, it's so little that you got to make sure oh my god somebody you see somebody bad you gonna turn around somebody bad again like you know what I mean so so I don't be tripping you know what I mean but Baltimore you see something bad you don't know when the next time you know what I mean so you gonna want you gonna want press on that so I say Baltimore man you know what I mean and, and more demand yeah gotcha my last rapid fire Dang, question gotcha. Hey, listen, we, we came ready, baby. You know, it, you know, the comedian, we yeah. gotta come ready for that. So, waitress walks up. Okay. Ask you about something. sound like a joke. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I took the time. Waitress walks up. Mm. Ask you about dessert. Yeah. Right? Okay. 
and your girl lets a loud fart slip out. At dinner. With the waitress right there. Waitress right there. <laughs> and you smell the aroma creeping from what you can tell. Came with the aroma. <laughs> A, you say check please. B, you roast her ass. C, you ignore it and order that dessert. D, you're disgusted and you just walk away to the bathroom and let her deal with that shit by herself. Now I'm a whole baby guy, I ain't gonna leave her, you get what I'm saying? Um, so I think I'm gonna go with whatever B was. I'm a support, I'm gonna be like, you roast her. Yeah, I'm gonna roast her a little bit, it ain't gonna be bad. Don't be like, look man, my girl, what's wrong with you? What did y'all give her? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, excuse me, can I see the manager? Cause that shit don't never smell like this. Like, I need, we need some, a couple dollars off for this. Cause I need a couple dollars off for this. There's no reason that shit was supposed to smell like steak and she ate fish, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a support baby. And then she gonna catch on and be like, yeah, cause that's it. <laughs> Sound got any more rapid fire? We good. Yeah, I had one, but that shit was so funny. I fucking forgot. All right, so since he forgot his, we're going to take our spin a block moment. It's normally okay. a moment from the show okay. where we give you the opportunity to either touch on the topic that we spoke on before you came on okay. or anything that we asked you who woke in where why, or you can spin a block and answer that question we just asked. So if you're not ready for that question. I, I, let's spin a block because I just thought of a question. It's all <laughs> so the question is, going back to the pandemic and the versus battle. Okay, talking right, about right. roasting. Right. So if you could pick any comedian that you could see yourself on right. versus battle on roasting, who would it be? It, like me, okay. All right, bet. Wow. Spawn um, match. <laughs> shoot. All right, spawn match. Dang, like so. Does it matter like what genre? If they older? No, somebody, no. somebody in my my like, if demographic. If you did, it don't even matter. I, so this is what I do, right? Because I'm smart. I produce shows too, so I'm gonna do okay. something to get to get the people going. Yeah, yeah, long time. My fast. guy, I love this man. That he my guy. He from DC too. I just get Chico B, man. Okay. I tell Chico pull up. That's my dog. Chico, 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 Chico South. I tell Chico pull up number one because it's going. We we going crazy. It's gonna be 95 South, 95 North, all that shit. You know what I mean? It's gonna be crazy, man. We gonna have a good time. It's gonna be in love. That's my guy. Special so shout out to Chico B, man. Words of Dmx niggas to start or something. So since we already spent the block, our next segment that we have is called Hidden Gems. And that's when we give the guests an opportunity to pretty much drop something that you want to elaborate on or anybody that's inspiring to start a nonprofit or somebody that want to touch comedian stages. Cause I heard you, you slipped that in there real easy that you opened up for who? Who did you do the show with? And you left at midnight to go run in Baltimore? Oh, that'll give us. That's, you slid that in there real yeah. like a light, like, but yeah. uh, that's amazing yeah. because yeah. I grew up on that comedy jam. Mm -hmm. So if you could give any gem to an inspired comedian, inspired nonprofit runner, what would you gem? Yeah, I think for both, since you, you gave me two options, I'm gonna say for both. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just, just get it done and understand that you'll grow and learn the most from just doing it. Just press and go. So just press go, man. Like. I, yo, one of the things that get to me the most over the years, not as much now, was like I used to be in schools and stuff like that, and people would be like, damn, yo, you ain't hit me, you could have invited me. And I'm like, bro, you know how many kids it is in Baltimore? Like, if you're really serious about doing something and don't, you just don't want to be on social media, then you just will pull the fuck up. Like, yes. <laughs> niggas, how the kids out here, you know what I mean? So, for y'all that want to, you know, start a nonprofit or a program, it's so many that might even have some synergy with what you want to do. So, just start doing it, you know what I mean? As much as you can, even if it's just one or two kids. And for anybody that wants to do comedy, man, there's plenty of open mics around. You can find them. Social media is definitely there, you feel me? It's active. So, just look at something, look for something and pull up, man. You'll become way better at both by the more you actually get busy. Not not staying at home, you know what I mean. So so get busy. Most a lot of my jokes are jokes that I might say on stage. You know, sometimes it might be improv. You know what I mean? I'd be like, man, that shit was funny. Then I come home and I work on it. You know what I mean? I build it out. Then it becomes material. So don't deny the process of actually just being outside. You know, doing what you what you want to do. Gotcha. And as I said earlier, man, procrastination is the assassination of your destination. And I think that's what, exactly what he just said, man. Don't wait. You want it? Go get it. Go do it. Do your research. Figure out how to get it done. Um, so after that, we pretty much give you an opportunity to leave the audience, our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, your supporters, yeah. with something inspirational. I feel like you said stuff that's inspiring this entire episode. Thanks, bro. But if there's anything that you want to pinpoint or leave them with that they don't remember, Big Fred, Fred Watkins, because you inspired them to do what or say what. 
Absolutely. So um, we all we all one for ones, right? We all unique. You unique. Everybody watching, we unique. All y'all here, and what we have to contribute to the world is very special. So the more you understand that, the more you get to hone in on that, the more you can do just that. You know what I mean? Like we really conditioned to look at other people, to consume other people, to uh, to just do things for people outside of ourselves. So trust yourself, trust that feeling in your gut. Whatever you want to do, whatever you feel like you can do, whatever your vision is, just understand that the world needs that, and, and press go and move forward on it. Let's get it. I love it. So. Before uh, we wrap things up, we have a segment of open minutes. Okay. Now we step outside of who you are as a comedian, right. who you are as the boss, who you are as the nonprofit runner. Yeah. Is there anything that's happening right now in the world of trending topics that you want to touch on before we get on out of here? Dang, what the hell been going on? I heard y'all. Y'all said a lot of <laughs> shit. Y'all saw, I seen Charleston White. That shit was cool. Okay. Um, but the thing about What's Charleston, Charleston White, Charleston? Y'all, That's a good question. So until I. I I know what he did before he came out. You know what I mean? I, I didn't tell you anything. Getting booked, he did some comedy stuff. When I seen him do the, the um, Cam Newton interview, he was talking, and some of the publications put some pictures up with him with that bow tie and shit. <laughs> Look funny as hell. <laughs> but but he was really doing shit, and um, he was really working. So I thought that was dope. Um, I think somebody like him, man, it's cool what he's doing, but it's some people that will. Take a step forward and take two steps back. Mm -hmm. So like he said what he said in the interview was dope, but then by the end of the interview he was in a screaming match with Cam Newton. You get what I'm saying on his own damn show. So it's like, damn nigga, like which one you wanna be? Like right. more I hear you, more I respect you. And then like just the podcast hosts on that too. Podcast hosts in general, man. Shout out to y'all for I did. That's only my joke. Shout out to y'all. Um I like y'all podcast, man. I love what y'all do, man, and the platform y'all provide, the questions y'all have. But man, it's a lot of people in this podcast culture that's just really chasing likes, you know what I mean? Chasing views and just putting whatever out there, you know what I mean? Um, so my thing, if I had answered y'all, y'all question y'all did that section, my shit would have been DJ Academics. I don't even like saying this nigga name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, they just one of them people, man, and it's a lot of people like yo, you know what I mean? And I wish that whatever their talent was, they could just win off their talent. But what I see them, bro, it's not talent what they doing. Right. You know what I mean? They pretty they much just, yeah, they the most, bro, and, and, and it ain't cool, you feel me? So. Yeah, fat facing them. I don't like them. <laughs> One thing I've said about Charleston in comparison to what academics is, and I respect Charleston for this, is mm -hmm. he's going to match that energy with whoever. We all right, right, just right, look right, at the right. Cam Newton and Char uh, Charleston White size difference. Yeah, like, he was in the screen. We all know Cam sure. Newton would fuck him up, like literally, right. but. Yeah. He did not back down at all on what he said, right. what he stood for, or if it was something that was against what Cam said, right? Right. Then you hear from Dion. Right. 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 We look at somebody like DJ <laughs> Academics, who constantly speaks on several topics, mainly women. He'll come yeah. with a different yeah. energy with women. Crazy. And it's been mad men that came in his head like, what's up? When I see you, it's on. And then he either don't say nothing or he changes his tone. And that's wow, the shit bro. I don't like. It's like, that's the one thing about Charleston I respect because he always gonna keep the same energy. Yeah, yeah. Charleston be talking that big shit. <laughs> you know, Charleston, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna tell that Cam Newton interview. I really didn't have like a thought or care about him. But after that interview, he's a smart guy, man. He knows exactly when he looked at the camera and said, "I changed my product and it's working." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "This nigga knows exactly what he's doing." Like it's almost, and I ain't gonna defend academics, but. I look at them as one and the same because they're playing to the audience that feed into the bullshit. Right. Like Charleston was helping kids. He said, oh, they like this bullshit. Yeah. That means tweak the bullshit. And it's working. He's a celebrity now. He's a star. Yeah. So I agree with you, though. Two steps forward to say two steps back. Like, I don't know exactly how you said it, but I agree with that 100% because at the end of the day, if you're messaging, like you're very like, specifically, I'm here to help the kids, help my city. Charleston White and academics, at times they come off sounding so intelligent, but within that, you lose you lose the audience because who are you really for? Right. And it becomes, it just becomes very shaky. So I agree with you on that. Yeah. People in this podcast space or any space or any creatives out there, this is my message. This is my five minutes message. Be authentic to who you are and try to get whatever you want out of what you're trying to create. If it's money, if it's an audience, if it's to inspire. But at the same time, know at one point in time in your life, all that's going to stop. And when it stops, is that something you're really going to be proud of? Just really think about it. After the money gone, the woman gone, and all that, whatever. Are you proud of what you left the legacy with? Because every time we get on this camera, I know that somebody can go back and watch this. And we can be funny, we can be serious, but I always want to leave with y'all knowing who I am and that I'm doing this for the love and it's about inspiring people. So 
That's how I feel today. And make sure you love you before you love anybody else. Because you can't spread love until you feel it. Yeah, so, exactly. so. For the, laughter, for, for the love of laughter for me, man, just comedians and laughing in general for me has been so helpful uh, just emotionally and for my mental health. Like, you know, I lost one of my best friends, Trey the Kid, R.P. You know, he was that one friend of mine that, um, he's straight. yeah, I could constantly, like he could, he, we was friends for so long that he could see if something had me off balance that day. And this nigga just was so naturally funny. I could see him make anybody laugh. Mm -hmm. Laughing is so important. If you listen to what Fred said today, you know he's been able to channel his comedy and be able to mirror that on kids and then pull out the, the comedy inside of them. And then hopefully with the same thing Miss Kelly did for you, yeah. you can do for the kids in your own profession. So, you know, for the love of laughter is, is important. You people out there that's been a part of cancel culture, you know what I mean? You really have to look at yourself in the mirror before y'all constantly start to attack comedians rap artists for these small things that do what they meant to do entertain you know what i mean show better love for comedy respect the ones that's been out here doing it and stop taking so much offense to shit that was made to make us laugh and before i wrap it up i just want to say special shout out to my third grade teacher miss duchene there we go i don't know if yeah. you didn't really inspire me to do shit right but you're the first teacher i ever seen kissing her husband i walked in the room at the prayer teacher office <laughs> and that changed my life i was like all my teachers acting so I just wanted to shout you out, man. Um, yeah. You know, we already shot a spotlight on it, but shout out to my studio, Tell Your Baltimore. Yeah. Shout out to all our supporters that do it for the lovers. Yeah. Shout out to do it for the love.com, do it for the love. Follow us on Instagram. Fred, anything you want to tell the people to follow you on? To see yeah, y'all can follow me, Big Fred Comedy, BigFredComedy.com. Check it out, man. We got merch and uh, a whole bunch of different links for you to just check out what we do, man, how we get down, how we get busy, uh, show dates coming up and all that stuff, man. We got some big things going on. Uh, the biggest show that we have is February, the end of February, CIAA weekend. So y'all check that out. Uh, stay live. And uh, we're going to make things happen, man. So if y'all on the West Coast, uh, stay live for some dates out in L.A. Um, I don't know how soon this is going to post, but I'm in, I'm in uh, Soho West in January, uh, I believe the second week. So we'll see. Just tap in with me, man. One love. And since you're bringing up old teachers and shit, you done brought out Miss Kelly. You said Mr. Duchesne. Mr. Duchesne. Oh, Shout out Mr. and Mr. Duchesne. Both of them. It ain't just, I hope it was Mr. Duchesne. <laughs> I remember my fifth, my fifth grade teacher, Miss Vanus. I ain't forget you You pushed me in fifth grade. Vanus. We ain't, ain't forget. I just made me think that shit. Child abuse? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Well, my brother was a custer ass yeah, up there. Right, right my shoe. What that? <laughs> hey, hey, Miss Kelly, you got better last names than both of them. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I don't know who Gushane and then uh, Douglas. Yeah, yeah, ain't yeah. hey, famous. Hey, Miss Kelly, <laughs> you got the best last name, girl. I, I always knew you was going to meet her. Hey, listen, some teachers inspire, some teachers set fire, and some teachers, you know, y'all just to desire. Do it for the love. Podcast. Yeah. Much love. Podcast celebrating the hustle, the passion, and the love that drives us all. we closing out. It's your whole self spit fire. Buddy Eric, Buddy Davis. I'm Big Fred. One love. Have a good night.